Good morning, everybody. How are you today? My name is Stephanie Ani. I'm an artist here in Concord, California. And this video will show you how I made this tag. This was the first of three tags that I did um, on Sunday, and I will have videos for all three of them. Let's see. So this guy. The only thing that you won't see on the video is how I did the doodling. That was just done with a bronze sharpie. And uh, it just needed a bit more jajum, boom, baboom, whatever you want to call it. It just needed a little bit more, so I did go through and put some dots. To let you know, um, this is a, just a piece of ephemera that I had from a book that I got at the library book sale. This is from Tim Holtz Postcards. This is from Tim Holtz Paper Dolls. And this is from the Tim Holtz Expedition Ephemera Pack, I believe. I'm not certain about that because a lot of stuff has gotten mixed together for me, and it's hard to keep it separated. Um, I will most likely put a ribbon out of the top of this and my intention for people for this is I I do want to sell these and um, for me how I see them is it's one step up from a card from a gift card so if you just started dating somebody or if you just want a little add-on gift like you know I know my mom would love to receive this and she loves to read, and so it would be something that she could easily use as a bookmark and that could um, remind her of me every time she uses it. If you just started dating somebody and you don't want to get them a formal gift, I think that this would be a neat little thing to get them. They don't feel overwhelmed or obligated or frightened, and they will feel grateful for the fact that you thought of them. So um, that is my intention with these tags. So without further ado, here's the video. Okay, I'm back. All right, the first thing that I actually want to try and see is how Distress Oxide works on this cedar plank and if that's going to be something that I can use on this. Because I love my Distress Oxide. Um, Ooh, that's a great, these are all, every single color in the um, January 2017 is really beautiful. It's, what's hard is choosing which ones you want to go with. Here's my blue. Oh, it's hard to choose. Okay, so I'm just going to start with, I'm going to do this more the Tim Holtz way. Um, this gold paint is on the other side. These are just, um, this is just a plastic sheet that I actually get from work. It's, uh, I'm do insurance actually. And um, these are plastic covers that um, are used for policies or um, correspondence from home office basically. Um, okay, so, and uh, let's go with a little bit of yellow here. I'm doing this the Tim Holtz way. I watched his video on this, so we're going to hope that it works. I am not, I've tried this before with um, the tags, and the tags worked well. So, let's see, I'm going to put this purple over here. This ink will um, reactivate with water, so hopefully, hopefully, we get something awesome out of this. Okay, move this over a little bit. Let me do this. Okay, now you can see the colors a little better. This is a water bottle. It was a spray conditioner bottle because I have long hair that's very fine and tangles up. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to get a little bit of ink on all over the place. I'm going to grab out my heat gun.
Okay, so like I said before, this is the stress oxide over a cedar plank that I got from the cigar store. Oh my god, it smells so good. Okay, so that blue is perfect. The purple shows up really well. The fired brick isn't bad. Whoops, stay. Okay, don't burn the house down with your heat gun. That should be a rule. That should be a rule. Okay, and since it's dry, you are supposed to be able to go right over and do a second layer. Okay, we'll dry that. Try not to melt my plastic onto my sheet. Okay, so since this is going to be a two-sided piece, um, okay, the orange is not showing up very well, or I'm not dipping it in it. The yellow should be showing up better than it is. Um, let's uh, do this real quick. This is. Always a bit of an experiment. See what works best. Okay, I'm going to keep that pile of ink right there, though. That looked good. Let's see what that does. Okay, that should work out good. Uh-oh. We're still okay. Okay. This stuff is very fragile. It does do that. Once I put the um, images on, it gets much stronger. Good to know. Okay, so the green worked well. What other colors work well? We're going to try this pink. I have a feeling that will show up well. Um, purple did show up. We just didn't have much of it down there, I guess. And uh, fire brick was okay, but not perfect. Okay, making it dotty, dotted, dotable. We're gonna do some on the back too. That green shows up really nice. Let's see how this pink shows up. Ooh, that's gonna be pretty. So yeah, I'm putting ink down and dragging it through, and, um, oh, no, 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 you are not allowed to break more. Okay, so this technique might not be best for this media, so we're going to try it a different way here. We're going to try to see what happens when we apply it directly to the piece, making little border, get some of this fossilized amber on here, that should be a good color with this. Should being the operative word. Okay, what's going to happen, folks? I don't know. Ooh, but it's pretty. I guess that's... So all I'm doing here is trying to make bigger splotches. Which I could do that with my paintbrush and some water too. Oh. Probably be a little bit easier than what I'm attempting. Let's see here. Yeah, that works a lot easier. <laughs> okay, let's blow dry this one more time. Heat, heat gun. 
This is a monster heat gun. I am well aware of that. And I would like to get a smaller one. But this guy does the trick, man. Okay, I think it's kind of cool, as it is, uh, but, you know, I'm kind of one of those people that it's not really ever done. And we're just going to add just a touch more blue, because blue's my favorite color. adding just a touch more here and there. I like it. I think it's cool. It's cool stuff. The stress oxide is. I I have the January or July 2017 release. I have not opened them yet because I've been dealing with other crazy crazy projects lately. Uh so I haven't, I haven't been able to use those yet. All right, it's still wet, and we're gonna go right over it. Mod Podge does interesting things to distress oxide, and I love what it does, but it changes it. Just know that, okay? Um, it gives us a leathery -er feel. It changes the values of the paints. And we're going to put these guys right down here because we've got that crack. And we want to make sure that this piece of wood has the integrity that we need it to have. Okay. And it's not wanting to stick for two reasons. This is a very slick surface, which we're going to take care of that right now. How do you take care of a slick surface? I love the background on these cards, on these postcards. These are Tim Holtz postcards. Okay, so if something is too slippery and doesn't want to stick down, you have to rough it up. This is just a piece of a P180 sandpaper. I would like to have a sanding block. I will be getting those at one point. I haven't really had a need for it. All right, taking down the slickness of the back of this card. All right, I feel like I'm getting Mod Podge in my hair. I don't need Mod Podge hair. Okay, um, still not working. Okay, so. Why is it not working? I think it's not working because this is still quite wet. And let's dry it up, see if that helps. I don't mind that paint got on these guys. I can wipe it off if I want to. Ooh, this is a hot heat gun. I'm gonna just melt that plastic. So we're gonna set that plastic to the side. This is a heavy duty one for being out in your workspace. Oh, it's causing the Mod Podge to, to boil, which is giving a cool texture. We love texture. Oh. Oh, it's burning. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, don't get your heat gun too close or it will start to burn. <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> You have that on video. I was burning the house down. Oh, my poor landlord. Oh, my God. All right. Let's try this one more time. Okay. So, I think what I'm going to do is that I know I'm going to end up trimming those edges a little bit. I know that this is going to take at least like um, a book of weight over it. See what uh, Mod Podge does to distress oxide. I like that actually much better than um, than the uh, dot and blot process. Okay. Let's see which side's going to be up. This side's going to be up. I want to put on this one. Market Street Whale Railway. And I think this is for San Francisco. I think it is. Now, I am not being careful because I want this color to work into here. And I know that those guys are on the back and I know they're doing funny things. Um, and just to let you know, I did crumple this piece up. And uh, we're gonna put this guy over the top here. Oh, but he's covering up all the streets that I know. Let's see. Okay. All right, let's uh, make sure we've got enough glue down here. Get our little buddy on here. And let's take a, because I'm already dirty handed. Don't drag that back over him. Oh, come on now. Line him up to where you want him. Make sure he's straight. Got a little goop on him. It's all right, it's Mod Podge. It will still clean off at this point. Okay, my fingers are covered in it. Again. <laughs> Not an unusual occurrence. Okay. So I know I'm really pressing these guys down. It's all right. They need to be pressed down and it's okay if they're on a little bit of a dirty surface. Um, I want them a little bit gooped up. Maybe not as gooped up as that. Uh, I need another piece of plastic for clean, clean surface. Let's uh, go in and just give these guys a quick wipe down. And what I should have done was colored the edges of all of them. Got white edges. Don't like white edges. But we have a solution for that. It can all be fixed, folks. Actually, maybe I will just do it like that and flip you around. Okay, he's cool. Top part of that's really cool. Let's see what else we should put on here. What else do I have in my Tim Holtz ephemera packs? These are numerous packs that I have. Oh God, those guys are funny. Family, football players. I'm, I'm looking for something with a little bit of color though. The two for five, that might be good. The number might be good. Um, mm, 
These guys are business guys, so we have to... Number four. Let's see what we've got here on the other side. I love this star. Little tiny bits and pieces. Ooh, but that's going to go in a different one for sure. Let's see. Oh, hand. Oh, I love that one. Ooh, here's another guy. Ooh. It's kind of spooky looking. Okay. Um. It's kind of fun. Don't know if that's where I want that yet. Two for five dollars. That's kind of cool. this down. It's not very exciting. three there. How about, ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are out of this. Uh, yeah, I picked it up at a um, book sale. It's a replica of a Sears and Roebuck uh, catalog. Awesome. Has some of the best stuff you could find. Ooh, I kind of like it over that picture. I wish I would have, you know, put it down up before, but, you know, all those guys are not super important because we don't know who any of them are. Um, well, maybe I'll just do this, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that works. Okay, and uh, maybe he needs a little bit of that uh, too. Are we just adding things for interest? Right? Yes. Yes, that's right. Okay. 
Okay, so that card still is not wanting to stick down. See if it'll pop up all the way. No, it doesn't. Okay. All right, so I have my clean board here, and then I want to make sure that I'm not getting Mod Podge down on my clean surface, because it sometimes helps to have a couple different surfaces to work on. And I did want that to wrap around. I could have cut it down, but I wanted it to wrap and have some sort of continuity between the two. Okay, I, and I do dig that. All right, what 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 next? What next? She's got to have something next in here, right? Can't be that easy, can it? Well, it just might be, folks. Might be that easy. I'll put a little bit more of this guy down here. So, yes, if I would have been planning properly, we'll do the next one better. We're learning. We're learning with every single thing that we do. It's a learning process. Okay. All right. Very cool. Okay. Now that is going to interfere with my Stabilo. I know that. Very cool. Okay. Now that is going to interfere with my Stabilo. I know that. Oh, I know what I could do to make this more interesting. I've seen this done recently. Like it. Like the process. Walnut stain. Uh, let's find something to put this into. I do like how this looks. So, um... You know, I watch a lot of stuff on the internet, and I, I see and learn from everything that you guys do. And, um, you know, all of us have learned from each other. And that's how it should be. Now this does not want to dry over the Mod Podge, of course. So they're going to make little smeary circles. I like the little smeary circles. And um, can I do any on this side? I can put one there. I'm not going to go over the top of this photo very well, I don't think. Okay. 
again, there's a surface issue with this guy. Um, in fact, I can do this. Oh, I just did spray on everything I had on here. <laughs> Good God. Oh well. It could be worse things to have spray all over, right? Okay. Try to keep your stuff cleaned up as you go. It's much easier than doing it at the end. Okay, I like him. I do want to darken that uh, because I like how that darker color looks. Cool. And we're even getting some spots on these guys. Okay, going to go back to my cleaner surface here. Clean it off a bit more. It only takes two seconds for it to get dirty, right? I'm taking off the Mod Podge. And as you may or may not realize where the, the ink is sticking is most likely where the Mod Podge is. This is just dry. There's nothing on here. It's totally dry. Okay. That's cool. Oh, wait, we're going to do you like this, aren't we? So that's one side. That's the other. Um, oh, there. There. Oh, still got goop right there. Okay, next step. Um, we'll just go with some stays on ink here. Take off the plastic part. Do not put your paintbrush in your coffee cup. This is an interesting piece. I, I like it. I like how it's turned out. Okay, make sure that as I'm cleaning him up, I'm not putting him down in dirt. Golly. I think I'll get a pad of paper. And I want it to stabilize.
He's a very handsome fellow, isn't he? In a very <laughs> stick up his butt kind of way. <laughs> Doesn't look like he likes to party much, but maybe he's a freak. Who knows, right? Who was this guy? And did he have any clue that his picture was going to be immortalized by thousands of women who, who are Tim Holtz addicts? <laughs> I love old pictures. I love vintage. Um, it's my happy place. So, okay. So this is a Stabilo, um, eight zero four six, and it is a must-have tool in your toolbox. I think, but I like, I like the effect that it gives. So we're going to, oh, my hands are dirty, dirty. I can tell. Take that shadow down just a little bit around him. Here's what I need to do. Because I like having a clean line. And look how much that just... Cleans up that whole thing. Stabilo is a very user-friendly uh, medium tool. Look how pretty that is. I like that much better. Very friendly. The paintbrush really does allow you to get um, a fine line. Sometimes. I have no problem with this being... Well, actually, I can fix that up and make that look better, too. So I'll try it, and if it looks better, I'll continue to do it. It looks better for me to have a little bit of brightness in between the edges. So I'll do it. I'm going to get myself a little cup of water so that I don't have to go into my big cup all the time. A little little convenient things here. Love that. Look at that. Do not put dirty fingers on the face of the cool guy. There we go. Love that. That is cool. Should I put a little bit more stabilo in there? Could add a little bit. Since it's wet, it just kind of melted right onto there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so. Since these are going to be sold pretty cheap, I need to do them faster than this. Um, but this is my learning one, too. My next one won't take as long, I can be guaranteed. He's pretty awesome. 
Okay, and let's see what we got going on this side. I guess we're working on it this way together, aren't we? Perfecto. All right, our final stage in this is, use our handy dandy crop a dial. And I don't want to put it right in the middle. Crop a dial does go through most everything and it is C-R-O-P a dial. Now I have to find where I put my rivets. Yeah. Push it up to the top. 